I think when it comes to horror games, the most successful ones don't just try to scare you. They want to cause you anxiety. They want you to fear what's around the next corner and what is going to show up soon. And I think that Still Wakes the Deep does that well with its psychological horror. As usual, these are just my opinions and my thoughts on the game. If you have your own, put them in, down in the comments. If we talk about my ratings, Still Wakes the Deep is right in the center of my I Love It category. It nails a lot of the aspects of a psychological horror game, but it's a game that is very on rails with its level design and some of its like gameplay mechanics. Still Wakes the Deep is a Lovecraftian psychological horror game that takes place on an oil rig off the coast of Scotland. The rig drills into something at the beginning of the game and unleashes this mysterious energy that transforms people and is slowly destroying the rig you're on. Still Wakes the Deep's setting really plays into that feeling of anxiety that you get from the game because it plays on one of the primal fears of mankind, darkness. The game has you going through a lot of the interior of the oil rig without power on, so you can normally only rely on your flashlight to see. Even in areas where it's brighter, there's always something hampering your vision like fog or fire, so it's hard to see. The other thing that kind of helps build up this feeling of anxiety, at least for me, was the game's mechanics. Everything you do is manual in the game. There is no, oh, I got close enough and automatically grab the ledge, like in a lot of other games. Or if you're using a ladder, hopping straight onto the ladder and just climbing up it. No, you have to hold right click to climb up the ladder, to hold onto the ladder while pressing W to climb it. Like with Still Wakes the Deep, you have to grab the ledge yourself by holding right click as you're about to land at it. Otherwise you're gonna miss. Or like I said, you have to hold right click while climbing the ladder, otherwise you're going to slide down or just sit there. And you might, you know, if it's over a big open area, you might just fall to your death. And when you encounter enemies, my anxiety with them at least went through the roof because like a game like Outlast, you have no weapons or ways to defeat them. You can only sneak your way around the enemies. There are times where you have to actually run from the enemies, but most of the time your goal is to kind of just sneak past them. Otherwise, you know, you're dead. The downside of the game, like the biggest downside that I can think of with the game is its level design. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I know their focus with the game is on the story, but the level design for Still Wakes the Deep is very much on rails. The only exploration section is at the beginning of the game before the events truly kick off. And that's just talking with people. After that, it's just follow the open path before you and go where the game directs you. No secrets or exploration. Sure, you're looking for like phone calls and stuff and waiting for those to happen. But otherwise, like there's nothing to really explore within the game. And with all the paths being like very thin, you know exactly how they want you to go and where all the time. I'm not saying like this is horrible level design, but you know, it is just, it is a railroaded experience. If you're into that kind of thing, then you'll really like the game. I like the game for other reasons. Main one being the story. I think the game's story and voice acting is its best feature. You're playing a new worker on the rig who was in a bit of trouble on the mainland. So his mate got him a job on the rig to try and avoid the authorities. It didn't work and just as he was being sent back, the incident occurred. Then you and some of your non-transformed colleagues are trying to escape the rig and stop it from blowing up. But also your character is kind of, you know, uh, fighting his own head with regret for leaving his wife and two kids behind to get on the rig and try and avoid the authorities. Like it's a very good psychological story which I don't really want to dive too far into because I want you to go and experience the game yourself. And that's kind of just the main gist of the story. And the voice acting is fantastic. I think they have a great voice cast and the writing for every character feels believable and like they're a real person. Who's making that noise? Gibble, he's making that racket. Should we no find him, help him? No, I not recommend that. What does that mean? It means he's no alright. After that explosion, they got oil or some shit on him and just... I don't 
don't know. He freaked out. Wait for me. Altogether, I think Still Wakes the Deep is a really good psychological horror game, even if it is basically a walking simulator. While the setting, story, and mechanics help build up that feeling of anxiety throughout the game, the level design feels like it's trying to stay out of the way so you can get to the next beat of the story. And I don't see that as like a really bad mark. Like it could have been more interesting, but because they are focusing so much on telling a compelling story, it feels fine to me. But yeah, those are my thoughts on Still Wakes the Deep. I do kind of recommend that you play it if you are into psychological horror, because I think that's what the game technically is. I know it's a horror game, but there's so many damn subgenres that to me, this feels like psychological horror. But yeah, that is all I got. I hope if you did like this video that you will do all the algorithm stuff, like, subscribe, leave a comment down there. And yeah, I will talk to you guys later. And I hope you have a royal day or night.